Thank you. Um, so I'm going to present on the last of the three substantial topics that we covered in the Learning to Compete project. And what I'm going to talk about is um, our findings in relation to agglomeration and um, its importance um, in industrial development. So just by, by way of introduction, um, you know, when we talk about agglomeration, we're talking about the potential productivity benefits or productivity spillovers associated with firms being located in a close geographic, close, close in a geographic concentrated area. Um, so what we're looking at here is um, a little bit about what the drivers of agglomeration are um, and a little bit about whether or not they actually lead to these types of productivity spillovers. Uh, so, you know, firms generally, we can think about them being drawn together for a variety of different reasons. And we can summarize these um, in kind of the motivation to reduce costs and its costs of transporting goods, costs of transporting people in a way, and also costs of transporting ideas. That's kind of the way we would conceptualize it. And, you know, there's evidence of, of clustering um, in both developed and developing countries. So um, it's... Um, it's something that is, uh, um, is, is thought to contribute to a lot of productivity growth. Um, so understanding what the benefits are of agglomeration um, and what the driving forces are is important for the design of, of spatial, spatial policies. Um, what we find in our studies is that on the one hand, there are productivity spillovers and uh, significant productivity spillovers associated with agglomeration above and beyond that's, that which you would naturally expect from being um, closely located in an urbanized um, environment. Um, but we also find that these, these, these benefits are not for all types of firms. So there is significant heterogeneity in the extent to which these benefits are realized. Um, in addition, the you know, spatial distribution um, of economic activity is going to have implications for, for inequality within a country. So this is another reason why it's important to think about, about these issues. So there's a lot of evidence on agglomeration, its benefits and its drivers in developed countries, but in developing countries there was a significant gap. This is partly related to the fact that it, it requires a lot of data in order to be able to look at these issues. Um, so in learning to compete, what we tried to do was address this gap and answer two particular questions. Number one, what are the drivers of agglomeration in poor countries? And number two, what the impacts are um, on firm level productivity? So just to um, summarize very briefly, when we think about you know, the, the reasons, the theoretical reasons why we might expect um, firms to agglomerate or to cluster together, um, aside from the natural advantages associated with locating in certain places, there are kind of three standard reasons why we would expect firms to locate together. Um, first of all, there is a broader market for input suppliers. So input suppliers themselves might locate where they have a large, there's a large amount of manufacturing activity. They can benefit from economies of scale. And then downstream firms can benefit from lower inventory costs and um, you know, timely delivery of inputs and even sometimes inputs tailored to their needs. Um, also, in an industrial cluster, you benefit from you know, a thick labor market, so a pooling of the labor resources that you need, and it can be, facilitate a better matching of, of, of workers to jobs and a better matching of hiring and firing more generally. And then, of course, we've got the Another agglomerative force is that of technology transfers and knowledge transfers, and that's you know uh, spillovers that happen between firms um, because of their geographical concentration or their location near each other. So in learning to compete, we looked at four different country cases where we had data to explore this issue. Um, and in each of the country cases, we had Vietnam, Cambodia, Ethiopia, and Tunisia. Um, we used firm level panel data, um, with the exception of Cambodia, which was just, just a cross section. Um, and we, first of all, examined the pattern of clustering to see whether or not there was evidence that there was um, a clustering of different activities. Um, and we found that in all cases, firms are highly clustered. Um, and it depends really on kind of the, the infrastructure as to the extent to which that clustering occurs. For example, in Cambodia, which is, you know, a poor country relatively um, to Vietnam, poor infrastructure and with higher transport costs, we found a significant amount of clustering and a significant amount of clustering of kind of the very small firms that, you know, um, due to these other constraints couldn't locate anywhere else. Um, and we had similar findings um, in Ethiopia um, and Tunisia. So that was kind of the four cases that we were looking at. And then we tried to dig a bit deeper into each of these cases to see whether or not we could uncover some other insights for, for developing countries. So from this, we've got three, I've kind of got three key lessons to, um, 
to raise today. The first lesson from what we have learned is that measurement matters, and in fact, how you conceptualize agglomeration in developing countries also matters. Um, thank you. Um, so what we, what we found in the case of, of Vietnam um, is that the source of the agglomeration economies and how you think about the types of t knowledge transfers and technology spillovers, how you think about them actually happening, um, really matters. And what we found was that a lot of the measures that are standard in the literature um, think about agglomeration in terms of employees and in terms of employment, and that a lot of the spillovers um, technology spillovers happen through that mechanism. Um, workers moving jobs and so on and so forth. What we found in Vietnam is that in fact it's the entrepreneur that matters. Um, and so the measurement and how you conceptualize thinking about entrepreneurs being in clusters and detecting these agglomerative forces um, um, needs to be given consideration um, in these, in, when, when looking at agglomeration in developing countries. And the second lesson was that agglomeration increases firm level productivity. Now, this is very challenging. Um, there's a lot of identification challenges associated with um, um, finding these productivity spillovers or identifying these um, productivity sp spillovers econometrically. Um, but we did our best to do that within the different studies. And what we did find that, obviously, unsurprisingly, urbanization economies are important. But controlling for these, we found evidence of further productivity spillovers. Um, in Vietnam, the evidence was that uh, the small firms are the ones who gain more, and there were significant spillovers for foreign-owned firms, in fact. In Tunisia, they also found evidence um, of a transmission of ideas um, between firms that are located close to one another. Um, in Cambodia, there was weaker evidence of net productivity gains overall, um, but there was some evidence for informal firms in particular, which was quite, I think, a novel um, um, addition to the literature, the fact that we managed to look at informal firms. And in Ethiopia, the agglomeration firms had higher productivity, but only if they produced similar products. Um, so, the interesting thing about these findings as well was that in both Cambodia and Ethiopia, there was evidence of strong negative effects on prices. Um, and this is competitive effects, um, and which is you know, what you might expect. And this kind of brings us to the third lesson, which is that you know, clustering was not the best option for all firms, that the increased competitive pressures in localized markets will drive down the price of goods and services, as we would expect, but poor infrastructure, lack of regulation, and other constraints um, will lead to um, firms having, to have, having no choice, really, but to locate close to each other. And this is problematic for very small industries or very small firms um, who you know, don't have the opportunity, if you like, to grow, expand, um, and um, invest. So these competitive pressures, if you like, um, are kind of a countervailing force when we look at agglomeration economies. There are productivity spillovers for a lot of firms, but a lot of the small firms um, do not benefit on net. And um, of course, consumers will benefit from lower prices, but in terms of growing industry and growing small enterprises, um, that is problematic. So our conclusion there was that you know, clustering is not necessarily the best option for all firms. So just to kind of conclude on some of the, the broad policy implications, um, well, what we found was that there are potentially significant uh, benefits from agglomeration. Um, and of course, this points to the possibility that a policy um, of attracting firms and um, encouraging firms to locate near each other through SEZs, for example, um, might be a wise policy. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but maybe John will also speak about that in a little while. Um, but of course, you have to bear in mind that a lot of the evidence from the SEZs that's out there, and uh, not something we studied specifically in our work, but the other evidence that's out there has suggests that the SEZs in, in, in Africa have not been that successful, um, and particularly not near as successful as you, they have been in, in the rest of Asia. You know, the evidence shows that there's low levels of investment, um, there's limited exports, not much job creation in general. The, they haven't been as successful as, as um, what was originally expected. Um, but um, recently there has been a renewed commitment in that among sub-Saharan African countries and a lot of this is driven by, by China where um, you know, they are actively establishing a lot of um, um, SEZs. Um, and so I think it'll be um, interesting that you know, I think a lot more further research is needed in order to see um, whether or not this has the desired effect.
Um, but the other policy implication is that not all firms are benefiting from clustering, and, and a lot of this is due to the fact that they're constrained by their location choice, and they're constrained by the infrastructure, they're constrained by regulation, um, and other, other factors. Um, so giving more flexibility in that location choice is important, and that will require investment in infrastructure um, and in making the, the, the market more flexible in general. So.